Hi, it's Ryan Moody here, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. In this blog, we're going to have a look at the new Panoptics Live Scope from Garmin. This is the latest recreational sonar technology and it's a fantastic tool for studying fish and their patterns. So LiveScope is live scanning sonar that is pretty much the next best thing to having a camera down there. But before we go into the field and show you some amazing examples, let me just explain some of the pros and cons. Those of you who have done my Sonar Skills 2 course will know that there are horses for courses in terms of what sonar application to use where. For example, when searching for fish or objects, you can't beat side scan, and for assessment of fish in deep water, you can't beat 2D. I would describe LiveScope as an observation tool that's great to watch as you're fishing. You'll learn about fish feeding patterns and the reaction to your lures. You can also track fish around the boat as they move and also you'll know if they've spooked and moved on. Unlike other forms of sonar, LiveScope shows fish as their real size independent of scroll and boat speed and other variables that can change the way a target looks. As I always stress to my students to fish smarter, not harder, you must get a handle on how settings and different applications affect how your display interprets what's underneath you. LiveScope is not a replacement for the other forms of sonar. It complements them, and a great one at that. It is a fantastic tool to add to your arsenal to understand what is going on underneath you. So, let's dive in and have a look at my very first day using the unit. I picked it up pretty quickly because I already have a good understanding of sonar interpretation. In other words, I already had a picture in my head of exactly what is down there from using my other tools like side scan, down scan and 2D. If you follow us on Facebook, you may have already seen the first example, but stay tuned as I've taken it out since then and I have some more exciting stuff to watch. Okay guys, we've come out today, I've got the new um, live scope from Garmin. Uh, this is more of a... Uh, it's more of a tool for when you're anchored, it's not the sort of thing you use when you're moving around too much. It's more of for observation of fish and how they respond to your lures and where are they moving in the area and all that kind of thing. So I've had a bracket made for the back here and it, it, it's adjustable, I can spin it around so I, I can face it wherever I want to. It's like a torch beam on an angle and what it is is as you move the transducer you're shining on a different spot. So you can follow fish movements around the hole, like a 360 degree sonar kind of thing, and you can see them in real time, you can see them getting up, moving around. I've come up here on the side imager and I've noticed some barras along the edge here, and I saw them on the sounder. So I've now turned over to live scope, and what I can do is I can move this transducer over towards the ledge, and you can see the bottom coming up there now, I'm moving it slowly up the ledge. And uh, I could just see them there before. There's one up around that three metre mark. You can just see him hugged in tight. We've got a bit of tide moving at the moment, so they're in a little bit tight. So I can just move that around. You can see a couple more there moving in. They're only 70 centimetre fish. You can see them moving down the ledge there now, two of them. And I can just move the beam to keep up with them. Sometimes you'll miss them. Looks like these ones are just behind us a little bit because my transducer is now facing right over. So if I back my uh, electric motor off a little and slip back and get a bit closer to them, you can see them just suspended off the ledge there. There they are, moving around. They're only smaller barrows, these ones. So it gives you the ability to look along ledges and out in the deep water as well, so you can cover whatever you want. It's just like shining a torch around in the dark. So it allows us to follow the movements of threadfin and things like that in holes. Fish that don't like to hold up, things that like to move around. You can follow them and keep an eye on where they're chopping and changing to. You can just see those fish in there around that three metre mark on that top of that ledge. There's just a few of them holding together there. So that's my transducer pointing over there where I saw them on the side imager. Now we can fish on them. So let's just see if we can see the lure on that angle. And there's a lure sinking down, boom, on the bottom, jig up, right on their nose. Come on, come on. Oh, one's having a follow, a couple of little fish following it there. You can see them on the screen, no, nah, they left it now. Oh no, there's this, look at them, they're following, but they're very towy. No, nah, it's gone out of the beam now. That's what Barrett, some fish species do, we've got a big wind change today, the barometer's moving a lot. 
but I had a follow. You can see the fish follow, so they'll probably go back in there and resettle again. There we go, there's one up there. He's moved up a little bit high now. He's moved up onto the shallows a bit further. So even though they're not biting very well today, you can see how I'm able to track fish using the live scope. Okay, you can see my lure hopping back there. Oh, I had a little fish come and have a look. He's gone back onto the ledge now. There's a few bits of bait fish out wide of it down in that four meter mark. It's out of the screen now. Let's just keep having a bit of a plug away here and just see what we can see and see what follows it. See them up there in about that three meters. Come on, there's my lure, hopping right past his face. Oh, he's, he didn't like that too much, but he's following it now. Look, come on. Nah, gone out of the beam. So it allows you to know when you've got a fish following your lure. And if they're not taking it, it allows you to change the method, slow it down a little bit. You can see in there again around three and a half meters. There's one there and there's another one up in two and a half. There's my lure. Yeah, look, we've got to follow again. We've got two fish coming on oh, no, up. They've gone back again. See that? So a lot of the times down there, if you didn't have this technology, you can see my lure coming up there, you wouldn't know if fish were following you or not. But at least I know they're half interested, so we're going to change a few techniques up, do all that kind of thing, maybe change it to a few different lures, different colours. So it allows you to know whether they're interested, whether they're not interested, and um, all these little habits will help put the pieces of the puzzle together. So you can see by this little example today, um, when it comes to observation, which is what you're actually still doing while you're fishing, you just don't sit there and throw a line out. Get yourself a live scope. It doesn't take too long to understand, um, and uh, you'll be surprised how much more you'll actually learn about the fish and what they like. We'll stay out in the field, and I'm going to show you a few more examples, especially fish feeding. This is really trippy stuff. In the first example here is a school of finger mark, or golden snapper in Australia. Uh, there's one there, the first one's coming into picture, the bigger green blob. You can see him swimming around the back there. Those other small green dots are actually um, largemouth nanigai around 30 centimetres. There's your second finger mark, he swims around the back of the school too. Now, very shortly you'll see all those nanigai, those small nanigai, all come together in a ball. Because in amongst them you can see some finer green dots which are chub mackerel, which is the bait fish. Now they, the finger mark will explode through there shortly. There they go, three of them. Saw them explode through the school of nanny guy. There they are. Now that's, they probably used those little nanny guy as a ambush point to get the bait fish. Now, here's a small school of bait fish. You'll see them scatter any second now. Then all of a sudden, two fish shoot through like torpedoes. So we just missed them for part of the beam, but yeah, you did see that they were actually feeding. Here's three fish approaching the boat, and then they stop still. And all of a sudden they see my lure swim underneath them and they scatter 100 mile an hour. So you know those fish have done the bolt, they're not coming back anytime soon. So it's great to watch what's going on around you so you know whether you're wasting your time or catching fish. Just like here, see the herring? Watch them scatter right now. You see that green flash go through the bottom? Well that was a bigger fish chasing the school. And uh, down to the right here you can see about middle pitch you'll see a few of those fish hugging the bottom there and that's um, a foraging pad. Okay, here we have a barramundi around 85 centimetres. Uh, you'll see it fighting on the live scope. There it is there, towards the end of the fight. You can still make out it's a, a barramundi by the shape of it, although he cuts in and out of the beam a fair bit. But the beauty of this sometimes is you know that if, if your area is bad for sharks, you'll know if there's any sharks following your fish. So a live scope can help you out in many, many ways. Here's a pylon, where you can see the beacon, the pylons coming down there from a beacon and the school of finger mark is underneath the boat there, right to the left hand side of the screen. So they're not over near the beacon itself, they're right underneath the boat. Which means that's where you should be fishing, because you're probably going to be wasting your time casting anywhere else. So, as you can see, LiveScope brings a great new dimension to your fishing, and I've had a whole lot of fun with it. Now, you may wonder, how can I be so confident that those fish are the species and the size I think they are? Well, that's because I'm using LiveScope in conjunction with my other tools. Because I've been staring at sounder screens on every day on Charter for 30 odd years. I already know what's down there. So I'll just stress that this is not a replacement for your other sonar tools, it is more of a complement to them. If you want to get the best out of your equipment, no matter what unit you run, and know for sure you're interpreting what you see underneath you correctly, take a look at our Sounder Skills 2 course. I'll be adding a new section on LiveScope in there, so you'll know exactly how to tune the unit to get the best out of it. 
plus where and when to use it. I hope you enjoyed this little tip, and if you'd like to see more of our tips and travels, head on over to our website, www.ryanmoodyfishing.com, and sign up for special tips that we only send out by email. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and hit subscribe on our YouTube channel. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and we'll see you next time.